Hello all, welcome to Cry Investors tutorial session for Monday, March 31st, 2014. Uh, Q1 end. Uh, here this is the last day of the quarter, so we see quite a bit of whipshaw action through the uh, market today. Um, I have uh, copied the uh, Google Hangout ADR and have posted it in the trading view uh, chat and so if anybody would like to pop in feel free uh, to make yourself uh, comfortable uh, until people do pop in I will go on mute and await uh, visitors Hello, madam. Hey, you. How so, are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Um, I'll just be kind of on the sidelines. Um, it was kind of interesting. Um, you're live today on YouTube. Yeah, I'm just putting these on uh, the web page. Yeah, it so works. It's very, very smart. So, I'll just be quiet, and when the room fills up, maybe I'll drop off, and then I'll just watch on YouTube. Yeah, I had another gentleman... Um, Suggest that I hire like an editor and just uh, reduce these tutorials and these uh, web uh, shows down to like 35 minutes, and then uh, just produce them on on read it. He said that I, I could make quite a nice little income off of it. So um, you know, it's an idea that I'm thinking. Why about. do you think that people wouldn't just kind of scroll through and like not do the editing part? Well, I just like well, the show that we did on Sunday was two and a half hours. Yeah. And it was, uh, it just seemed like there was a lot of sort of empty air, kind of like at the beginning here, you know, like uh, I just did a little intro and then I said, I'm going to go on mute until somebody arrives. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, that might be a half hour, 45 minutes from now, you know. Yeah, so I guess the thing is that the time to edit, like for example, I listened to um, yesterday's over. I listened to it over again. And I've done this with my old ones too, listen to it over again. And what's odd about the human voice when it, it's when it's not produced, when you don't have, you know, all of the the tools of production, whether it's a binder or a folio or chapter verse is that it's very hard to edit it down because there's things that are out of context unless you were to edit it and then like you know put a question in literally type the question out and then edit it so that there was the natural conversation that came out of the out of the q and a this is what i'm seeing about natural the way that the the way that humans kind of take over this in a way if you don't have it planned out subject matter time in, Q&A, time in kind of thing. Yeah, well, and that's where your skill is very, very good. Yeah, and so, but you could, you know, what you could do, Brian, is that I, I, you could hear in your voice that you were trying to limit it, 
So what you want to do, because you're not going to get the vibe of it. What I'm trying to have you avoid is, is trying to think that you need to edit this because um, I don't think that you do. I think you need to get just, I, I don't think you need to do. That. Well, like this, the start of yesterday's tutorial, I started like the first uh, 10, 15 seconds were just, uh, you know, nonsense. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. What well, I then you put a note down that says, okay, the first 10 or 15 minutes is nonsense, okay? And that, that's what that is right now. And then you limit it, you know, and over the next 10, you bring it down to a couple minutes of nonsense. But then yeah. people become like that's your opening slate. Yeah. You know, like you have an opening slate with your other YouTube videos. You have to kind of look at it that way, that you want to limit it to like 15 seconds of quote-unquote nonsense. Yeah. That's about what an opening slate is, is about 15 seconds in the theater. 15 seconds and then you're done. Now, if, you, if you're finding it hard to go beyond 15 seconds, then obviously, but I don't think that you, I think that you can tighten that part of it up. The second part is be very firm with your time. You yeah. know, just be, if it's 35 minutes and he's telling you that people will listen, like the average person listens to my broadcast for 38 minutes. So when he says 30, 35 minutes, make it, try, see him what you can get in 15 minutes and then build it out. You know, it's just, just really kind of really cut yourself. And it doesn't mean that you're cutting off the broadcast, you're just cutting off that chapter and verse of broadcast. Yeah. And um, well, I don't mind with these tutorials that that I mean, really, if anybody wants to just sit in on YouTube and just watch, I mean, basically the way I look at it, um, I I don't know whether you went to university or not, but I, you know, a lot of classes have what they call TAs or teachers mm -hmm. assistants, mm -hmm. and a lot of the TAs, you know, actually teach the labs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you'd have, like, office hours where, you, you know, you just yeah. didn't go bug the professor. You know, they were way too busy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the TAs would be just sitting in, like, uh, in the office, and you could just sit and just pick their brain and just, uh, you know, ask them questions. Right. And, and that's sort of what I want with this tutorial is that it's just, you know, if you show up and you have a question, you're new to, you know, like, uh, a good chunk of the people at TradingView, I find they just, they really they kind of don't know what they're doing. They're a little bit novice to it. So in that regard, I think it's a very altruistic thing that I'm just here to help and explain how price action works and momentum and volume and all that kind of fun stuff. Right, and you know that you can you can limit your, your time in. Don't, you know, just, just limit it for that, you know, nod, module or whatever you want to call it. Now, I will say something, and, and Dan Verasani um, also has this unique this unique outreach in that you guys don't know when to stop. <laughs> and there's so much great stuff that's coming in that beyond place. And this is where all of us are really at our best. When we're able to get it all out and then we move beyond that. And that's where the kind of the living is, you know. Everything before that you're trying to, um, I'm finding this out about men too, is that it takes a long time for men to, uh, tr it's not a matter of trust. I was talking to my husband about this team effort. Like, how does a football team do what they do? How, how does a football team get to the Super Bowl? How does a soccer team get to the World Cup? How do you know each other well enough to make a touchdown or a goal? How do you do that? And and there's there's trust and repetitiveness and practice and belief and all these things are involved and it's the same thing here and so what I'm hearing like for the most part like let, let's say yesterday's show with low pro is that this was supposed to be a show for two people but he came unprepared but here you are so prepared and because you're so prepared you can go into any number of these things well and, and that's just it right because I um you know, I, you know that you make an excellent point there. And I was talking. Uh, there was one gentleman who I asked to just sort of watch from my trading world, mm -hmm. and he had a long conversation with me yesterday. Uh, you know, in one of these hangouts, and he was kind of like, "Brian, you're not doing yourself any favors doing this." Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that low pro didn't come across, across as very professional. Well, he came unprepared. I think that he went. He wanted to contribute somehow, but then you do have to 
for example, you could be talking about something very esoteric in the market that I have, because I'm not book savvy in the market. I was given as, as a, a boatload of money to do whatever I wanted to with, and, and some banker boxes, okay? I mean, basically, that's my trading life. So I don't come from a book savvy trading life, or, or where people came in and trained me how to do anything. Self-funded, self-taught. So I've, all, I've gone through many of the learning curves, but I'm not an educator. So here you are, you have this bounty of preparedness, and then now you have the vehicle. And it's and I just so the, for the record, uh, you know, I would like to get low pro to that stage. Yes, yeah, because I think he yeah. can contribute. Yeah, yeah. But I just found that, uh, yeah, I had to sort of jump into that thing instead of ending it. And, yeah. so, and you could have just said, well, there we go. We've covered that. You know, we've covered enough, and let's go to Q and A, and then and then you'll find out that it'll kind of move on to the next subject. Yeah. In that case, you could have indexed the two hours to only deal with, um, like I tried to take some notes on um, when certain parts came up. But you have it, because you have come prepared, you immediately went into your training materials. Well, see, there's no balance with the co host there. Mm. You see, because. Uh, and so, you know, I don't know whether you know or not, but Joe's totally flaked out on me today. Well. Uh, you know, I mean, and that's you know that's half of what I'm getting involved with with these people. Right? Is that the enthusiasm? Right? The enthusiasm. Well, it's you know it's a, it's a professionalism. You know, I think they gave, these guys want to do this, but they're young and and they don't realize that you know that means you got to show up every bloody day. Yes. You got to know you got to know your stuff. Right. Um, and you got you know and and I guess because I know my stuff, I can kind of ad lib my way through stuff. And if we get into trouble, I can always just rely on like the that's course material right. that I wrote. You know. That's right. So, but uh, what I'm getting out of it is that. Um, it's uh, funny how I'm trying to hide behind when, the other when, people, though. When, eh? you, when you came to me and I came to you, and it was all kind of like, wow, there is power in this. There's definitely power. Now, for someone from Because well, you know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, I know the stock side, but I don't know the broadcasting side. Well, I mean, and I'm not an online entertainer or a professional broadcaster, but I have learned a few things. By, I'd say you're a professional producer. <laughs> by putting myself out there. No, um, no, don't, don't go like, you know, entertainer and all that nonsense. Yeah. You're a producer, you know. Well, you I mean, I've, listened to enough, I've listened to enough men in my life. Uh, and, I've, and I've had professional men in my life. <laughs> and you can kind of feel when, um, especially two guys that get together, and if one guy flakes, and I mean, one guy falls off whether they're nervous or, you know, and you can get nervous. I told you about this the other night, about that just jump in even though you'll be nervous, you know. So let's get well, That's to the, the thing with me is that I have no, you know, uh, I have no nervousness when I, I do know. this. I mean, we're broadcasting this live on YouTube. I, I mean, know, me neither. Right, because... Awesome. I I, it yeah. looks like there is actually somebody watching on YouTube, so they might be enjoying this conversation. Well, you, but, saw how, you saw how many views you got. My goodness, you went to 118 views last time. I I, 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 what, I don't know what it is right now. Yesterday's um, broadcast. That's why I said you will be very surprised at the archive view. Yeah. And so, you know, the... Well, that's what, what I, you know, and I've set up my channel so that at yeah. the top of it is, uh, is you know, a little tour of my website, and I yes, need to read perfect. it. Um, and then uh, I have a section for the tutorials and the shows. Yeah. And, uh, and then I want to start producing my market message videos again. And I think the three of those actually dovetail nicely. The problem with this, though, is that there's a huge learning curve that I'm that I'm going through right now um, in you know producing a quality product, and so that's 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 a learning curve I have to go through, and uh, you know sometimes when I listen to you talk, um, I understand that you're the professional and and you're you're um, you do have a very sort of A type personality. So um, it's sometimes hard when you get a whole bunch of A types all working together, like you were saying, how do football teams play well together? You know, mm -hmm. 
Um, it's it's tough, and uh, you know I. It it's evident to me running that show on Saturday and then just broadcasting that tutorial yesterday uh, how valuable of a person you really are, and I don't think you realize how good of a producer you are, regardless of the entertainment nonsense and all that. You know, you're a producer, and and that's where I think your real skill lies. So that's that's supposed to be a compliment. <laughs> well, and, and and you know I I'll take a compliment this week. You know that, right? <laughs> that's cool. I'll definitely take a compliment this week. I think I mean I I just think it's a matter of um, when you say that you want to produce a professional product. Let let me just tell you a little story. Four and a half years ago, this this crazy guy got on the internet and started doing daily vlogs. And he didn't know where it was going to go. He just knew that he was going to do it. This last week, Disney bought his company for five for five hundred million dollars up front with a four hundred and fifty million dollar performance payout. So, do you understand? An imperfect thing has value. Okay. A perfect thing has value. It's better to give the imperfect thing a try. Yeah, I know. Like I said, this is a learning curve. It, you know, you yeah. just got to get through this. It's, so, it's exactly. You have to get through it, read back on it. Um, hey, there's somebody I recognize. There. Yeah. Okay, so um, I've enjoyed. We do, we've been doing some pre-production talk, Darren. How, how are you? I met you the other night too, and and um, it's just uh, Brian, myself, um, chatting about how interesting YouTube is, but. Um, so as I promised, Brian, I will, because um, it sounds like you're going to have a charge. You're a student, and uh, I'll talk to you a little later more about this. Okay, I'll be on the sidelines for just a moment, and then I'll drop off. Well, whatever. You're more than welcome to stick around. And I mean, uh, Darren, you don't feel like you're on the spotlight or anything. Uh, no spotlight. <laughs> these tutorials are just open uh, for anybody. If you want to chat about markets, you have a question, feel free to shoot. You want to just talk about what happened today in the markets, whatever. I don't care. No, I'm an, I'm just here to learn, Brian. I missed yesterday's one. Uh, did you have one yesterday? Uh, yesterday. Let's see. And I, I pub publish all this stuff on this calendar. Uh, yeah. And I think actually I even produced it on the YouTube page. So I'm getting a little better at that. Uh, how do I get over there? Uh, I guess we'll go. I ought to put a Google link on here, right? <laughs> Of all the links not to have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do I do this? I think I go here, and then I go here. Uh, what was it I was going to say? Oh, yeah, well, it's on the YouTube. That's what I wanted to look up. Uh, mm -hmm. doo -doo -doo. I thought uh, I was going to be late. Uh, on your Twitter feed, did you? I uh, got the link on your Twitter feed. That were about 17 minutes ago. Yeah, uh, we've been on here a while. Beauty and I've been chatting about uh, what it takes to pro professionally produce uh, one of these things. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, if you go to this um, this uh, YouTube channel page, uh, I'm not uh, okay. how you look at it, but anyway, uh, you can see uh, yesterday's tutorials posted. Um, and then there was Saturday's uh, show, and I'm going to try and uh, post these uh, on this uh, page. So uh, it's there if you want to uh, go to it. I'm not quite sure. I, I guess. Uh, Darren, what you uh -huh. want to do is go to Brian's YouTube page and subscribe. Right. And that'll take oh, a yeah, that's Of course, that would make sense. Yeah. And then that way, not only does it bode well for Brian on YouTube, but it allows for you to get immediate notification when he does go live, so there's no delay. Um, Google Plus has a little bit of a delay, I think. Delay? Yeah. So subscribe, uh, subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I found it. Yes. And subscribe right away. So, um, did you have a question about anything in particular that you want to pull up a chart and look at something uh, in particular, Darren? Uh, not in particular. All I do is trade Bitcoin, Brian. I'm not multi multi oh, okay. talented like you. No. Well, it's uh, oh, I guess if you're shorting, it's not so bad these days. But, I got uh, out at six hundred. Lucky me. 
You so, sure from 600? Yeah, so I'm waiting for it to try. I'm trying to aim for like 400, but just got to have patience. Well, that's a good yeah. subject, Brian. Do you want to talk about patience? Yeah, well, um, I suppose that's probably a, a fitting topic. Here's my one-hour BTCE chart. I don't know whether you guys can see it, but all I see is, uh, you know, this massive bear ABCD pattern, and it looks like it's targeting right around this bottom of this price channel. So let's get your chart up, Brian. And oh, you can't see that? I can't see the chart yet. And let's see if we can read patience inside of the chart. And um, and that's and that's kind of what I'll oh, say. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. So, Darren, Darren uh, by me doing this, you're you're gonna you're gonna get a private lesson that's gonna blow your mind. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe where every, I can't believe there's only like the three of us. Where's everybody else? Last well, time we had a hundred or more people will watch it when it goes to archive. If they, it takes about twenty minutes for people to get in anyway. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've noticed, and really, this is just a tutorial, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised, to be perfectly honest with you, that the uh, trading trading view community itself it might taper off a bit, because this is usually what happens during bear markets. Yeah, okay. So, um, when things were rocking and rolling, you know, everybody's interested. But, uh, you know, most people that, you know, as a broker, we used to always say that 80% uh, of a brokerage house business, maybe 90% up in that area is long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you get bear markets, um, uh, all the people that want to be owners, they, you know, remember we talked about, uh, well, in previous episodes, I talked about fear and greed. Uh, and really, those are the two drivers in, uh, in the market. And um, you know, I know it's kind of a derogatory term, but uh, as brokers, we used to always call, uh, you know, well, and I mean, really anybody in the market. Uh, basically, we're rats, right? I don't know whether you ever seen what a rat's life is, um, but they'll only come out of the hole uh, when they figure that there's an easy food source, right? Uh, unless, of course, they're super hungry. Um, but as soon as there's any sort of fear, they scurry back into the holes, right, and they disappear. And so, unfortunately, I do believe we're going to have to go through a period of this with uh, Bitcoin. Um, and actually, I published a chart the other day. Um, let's see if I saved it. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like I have it here, just handy. Um, I'm waiting for that de that giant downward thrust because every time I watch, every time I seem to watch the Bitcoin chart and it's under some kind of it's under some pressure, and it's been bearish for a while. You see a few of those red candles and they're all going down so, uh, consistently one after another, and then all of a sudden, pop! You know, it just it just reaches as far down as it can reach, and then that that tends to signal at least a little bit of a reversal. And where we are right now, we haven't really seen that, you know. And I've seen it reach as far down to like as a hundred dollars that one time, but that yeah. was just a that was just some kind of weird. That must have just been one guy, I surely, you know. But uh, I I remember hearing some funny business about this. But okay, so this is, and I'll just reconstruct the chart that I did the other day. Um, mind you, we should see it on the Twitter feed here. Um, and this was, uh, there was another gentleman, and actually it's in the tutorial that, that we did. Um, uh, hopefully you can see my screen here. Can yep. you see my screen? Right, so the last sort of, and you know, keep in mind, this, not, this is not obviously into scale. But, you know, this was a pretty substantial move, 266, uh, as low as... Uh, you know, 60 bucks. You know, so pretty substantial. Um, oh, here, here comes another person. Like I, you know, the, the good part about you getting in here early, Darren, is uh, you get your questions answered right away because people will trickle in over time. So yeah, cool. That's good for you. That's fine. I actually just, I, I usually intend to just come in and just be silent, you know, and just, uh, and just absorb. But I'm lucky today. 
Just bear with me here a second. All right. Um, so uh, I was talking the other day, uh, yesterday's. Uh, so can you see my chart here? This weekly BTCE normal consolidation after big surge. Yep. All right. Um, and I was talking to a uh, Bitcoin bull. You know, a guy who believes in the fundamental story of Bitcoin. Um, and you know, I basically sort of left the conversation off, and you can see it all over my my publications. Um, I'm a rational uh, investor, so that means, yeah, half of the equation is fundamental, so that's like our red side, uh, but half of it's got to be technical. And really, we only want to take trades where the technical and the fundamental agree, and that's sort of this white area. That's called rational analysis. Um, so it was really interesting to have the conversation with him because, you know, I can't refute... Uh, the fundamental uh, change in what may be happening to the fabric of our society and the whole notion of currencies. Mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin in itself is, you know, basically the information age's way of keeping bankers honest. You know, and we have lots of different ways, you know, on the internet, and you know. What I find staggering now, you see city, uh, I mean, cities are just making a fortune. Vancouver, they're making a fortune off of the off of the par uh, parking tickets because all these meter maids, they just got the little handheld computers, and they're just ringing them up. Jing, 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 jing. It's just remarkable to watch them. Um, so, you know, you can see the information age is taking over, right? And I can, I can justifiably make the argument fundamentally. Uh, for you know a, high, uh, a a place for a Bitcoin to have an existence in this world, it's quite another thing to actually put a fundamental dollar value on one of these things. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can. I've never heard anybody say, you know, I'm holding a Bitcoin in my hand, a physical Bitcoin, and it is worth x amount of dollars. Why? Because fundamentally it's backed by this or this or this, right? I've never heard anybody actually put a dollar figure on this thing. So if we are going to play the game, then we better play it understanding that this is really, you know, speculation more than uh, than than the idea that we're f buying fundamental value. Um, so, you know, that sort of reiterated uh, my idea that really if you're going to, you know, speculate on this thing, uh, then you ought to inject some timing into your model. Um, and then we sort of finished off the conversation uh, with this look at this weekly chart. And, what you know, just what jumped out at me is uh, this previous peak. And like we said, that's, you know, 200 bucks. You know, the consolidation uh, was down to like $50, right? So in essence, from the peak down to the floor, that was, uh, what, about a 80% uh, haircut? That's yeah, 50 bucks of 250, somewhere in that neighborhood, eh? I mean, pretty big number. Yeah. Um, so here we are, a thousand. What would be an 80% haircut off of that? Well, maybe a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. And really, you know, asymmetrically, you know, the markets love to move asymmetrically. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me that that 100 print happened, right? Because it's right on this long-term trend line. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless you can see that this consolidation period, it actually was basically six months. It was nice a half a year. Um, and so if we just, you know, draw this similar parallels, six months off of this peak takes us into, you know, like late May, June, maybe late, early July, before yeah. we should really be expecting the next leg higher in earnest. <laughs> so... You know, and of course we have the the uh, seasonality coming up in in our face. And we'll um, break in for just a moment to welcome Haven Barrows. Hey, Haven. Hello. Hello, Haven. Thank you, beauty. Keep me honest here. Um. So uh, I guess the way I look at this is that the rally windows is what catches the public's attention. They're actually yeah. telegraphed. You know, like, do you see how this volume top came in here through this top? You know, this is just classic distribution. And so you'll know when the next big bull run's about to start because the buyers will come back in and they'll buy up all this crap. Oh, 
up. I think he's trying to work on his microphone right now. So you can put him on mute if you need to. Is that Haven? Mike is yeah, that would be Haven. Can anyone hear me? Hello, Haven. We can hear you. Still now. I can, yes. <laughs> yes. Mm. Can hear. Yeah. Can you hear us? Hello? Anyone hear me? Yes, I, we can hear you. Oh, excellent. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm just talking a little bit of long-term cyclical analysis on the Bitcoin. Uh, I'll finish off this with Darren, and then if you have a question, you know, uh, by all means, uh, we'll get to it, okay? Great. Okay. So if you could maybe just go on mute, um, just so we don't hear you rustling around. Thank you. All right, so, um, you know, we just left this conversation off the other day, this other gentleman and I, with the idea that, you know, I, you know, when I hear things like people are getting Bitcoins in their stockings for Christmas, you know, and people are paying, yeah. of course, these stupid prices, all of those Bitcoins have got to be basically put back into this smart money's hands. And this, in my opinion, is the process that, that they're going about doing it. And, it, you know, it's... It's painful because, you know, you see this price channel, right? Um, it's a long, slow grind. You know, this is uh, going to be a long, slow grind. And, of course, guys like you who have super patience, where did you short? You shorted up at 600? Yeah. So that's up in this neighborhood here on the uh, through this mess? Yeah, that was it. Right up in here. So you basically just sat nice and short through all of this. Well, it's, it was absolutely clearly obvious that it was going to go down. I mean, even if you didn't watch the graph, you just just the media, just the media circus that was going on about China and and everything. It's exactly what happened back in December. So I just thought it was crazy to buy in at that point. So that's why I left. That's why I got out. Oh, uh, so are you actually short, or you just are sitting in cash right now? Oh no, I'm just sitting in cash. They're two different oh, okay. things, aren't they? That's when you borrow someone else's money. Is when you short. Is that right? Pretty much. Um, you know, and that, you know, I I have to say, you know, I really have to reiterate that there's just so much risk in these unregulated markets. I mean, I frankly, it really wouldn't surprise me. You know, like I I heard somebody uh, say that uh, the other day, and like I said, it really wouldn't surprise me. That uh, there's you know like Eastern Bloc mafiosos and stuff that are running these exchanges like this BTCE if I'm not mistaken it's in like Slovenia or something like that which yeah, is uh, you know it. you know so yeah you're right I mean all of this stuff has to get flushed out um, and I think they're in the process of doing that. Such a shame, but that's uh, that's capitalism for you. And you know, it's funny how the Americans, um, you know, and not to be, you know, like dog them or anything, but you know, on balance, they're like free market, free market, free market, they say fair, they say fair. But then you get, you know, like this Mount Gox kind of situations, and then people get all upset. Well, you know, that's free market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So anyway, that's me on my soapbox. Um, yeah, so the Bitcoin story is tough right now, you know. Um, and you, wait, would you actually start buying back at down here at four hundred? Uh, it, de it would depend how it looked at the time. I think you know, I'm I'm actually aiming for three hundred and eighty, but I know that four hundred, for instance, is going to be a really strong resistance point just because it's just because it's pretty and it's got two zeros at the end, so. It might never get there, so that makes me wanna that makes me wanna raise it up to 400. But then I try and keep keep my discipline, and keep my order at 380. But then it starts to approach 380, and then I think it's going lower, so maybe I should lower it to, you know, 350. <laughs> and so it's you're all over the place as a trader, or I am at, at the moment. Just gotta try and stick to the plan, the original plan. Right. You know, I mean, and that's. That's uh, half of the battle with this is, is uh, you know, you may love it at 380 or you may hate it at 380. Yeah. <laughs> you just never know. know in this game, right? <laughs> so, just got to focus on the positives, though, because I've done it before where I've, I've um, 
t turned it into cash. It's gone down $50. I've bought it back. And then it's gone down yeah. another $20. That was an excellent trade, but I couldn't be more upset. Yeah. You know? Uh, I do like this support in here. What's this? That's 379 Oh, look at that. See this uh, pivot right here? Yeah. So this is basically what you're shooting for is a tag of this uh, this pivot. That would be a sweet wow. entry there. 375 Yeah, so just leave your order at 380 Yeah. I thought that, yeah. Um, that's, a, that's an interesting mark right there. You know, another one caught my eye, Brian. If I go, to, if um, if I use Bitcoin Wisdom and I go to the three-day chart and I draw my fib lines all the way from the, uh, oh well, I'm not the very, very low at 63.32, but at 75 dollars, and then I'm basically just drawing the fib lines over the over the whole, the whole chart because it's on the three-day candle chart. And Bitcoin Wisdom just added the 78.6 percent line. They only had. The <laughs> well, that's yeah, good. They only just had, they only that's had a the really. That's line. an important line, you know. Very. That's very at 293. That one, Brian. Yeah, that's at 293. Uh, all right. So there's Bitcoin Wisdom. What? I can sh I can share my screen. I think. Just let me just let me have a look. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. replicate to see what it is that you're seeing. Oh, okay. A three-day oh, oh. chart. And what are you looking at? BTCE stamp. Uh, BTC, I'm looking at, and obviously it's from the it's from the top of the move down to not the 63.32 because I didn't want to be too I didn't I, I didn't want to be too screen, I, All I see is your picture. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I stopped doing it because I was looking at your picture. Uh, let's have a look. Desktop. Start the screen share. Did it work? Yeah. Okay. Well, at least I see, see what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there we are at the top. Look, and I've put it down to this one at the seventy-five dollar mark rather than this one. Yeah. I've, I've put it that one just to be a little bit more conservative. And yeah, and these are all the fib lines, and it's been doing really well. You know, it makes me. It's. I used to trade on like the thirty-minute chart, but now I'm on like the six-hour chart, the four-hour chart minimum. I just trade these big charts now. And uh, and yeah, there's the 76.8 at 293, and I'm just, oh, you know, I just can't believe it would get there. It's just so far away. Just so. Well, uh, 293. So. I know. Uh, you've heard me talk about my uh, my optimal trade entry, the OTE. Have you heard me squawk about that before? Yep. Yep. All right. So basically, what that is is um, oh, is it's that window, the sixty-one point eight to the seventy-eight point six. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't know whether you can see my screen. Yeah, I do. All right. So the key here is. Um, and the reason why I call it the, the and it's not me, it's uh, this hedge fund manager that I learned this from, mm -hmm. is uh, that sweet spot. Look where it lands. Then the sweet spot is the midpoint. Look where it lands, right on that low that we just talked about. What's well, so that? What number is it? The thirty-seven point. There's a three seven four point seven one. Right. Okay. We said this low was 375. Yep. So if you have your order there at 380, I love that. That's music yeah, to my ears. That's the. I mean, that's that's basically the. Uh, that's that's the optimal trade entry on a harmonic, you know, pullback, just a natural pullback off of the entire range, right? Off yeah. of the entire bull market. So if you are a Bitcoin bull. Then this has got to hold. And you know, now my suggestion to a guy like you, and I don't know how many coins you're playing with here, and you know, I don't understand why Fibber didn't do this, but why not scale your way in? Buy a little bit, 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 buy a little bit. Yeah. Your average, if you get filled on all of these, uh, you know, little orders, will be the OTE sweet spot. And that's yeah. the level I think that they're going to try and go after, right? This is a, you know, probably this high. There's probably a whole bunch of buy orders still sitting out there from this high, right in here. Yeah. Whether you can see my screen or not. 
Yeah. Uh, so anybody know that now? I, I don't know whether this is a fat finger or whether it was just a single trade or what. I don't know whether that cleaned out those those orders. But if there was going to be any, uh, you know, this little window here, in my opinion, is definitely an area where there's a whole bunch of business that'll be done, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, people that miss this move and are just sitting there and their broker's going, you know, just be patient, just be patient, just be patient, right? Mm -hmm. They'll get filled. Um, people that have their stops just below these lows, they'll get filled. So anybody who's sort of running an order book right now and is hunting for orders, right? You know, let's say you got like a half a million coins on your books, right? Mm -hmm. They know that there's going to be a whole bunch of people here that are going to sell, right? There'll be a whole bunch of sell orders sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, the, the order book guy uses these little pop-ups to get short and then, you know, puts up his brick walls and, you know, maybe, and from what I understand, the way I've actually heard a few people talk today, um, the guy that was speaking at this San Francisco conference kind of knew ahead of time that there was going to be trouble out of China. Um, so, you know, maybe they're all doing this, right? And then you get the price down into here, all the people that have their stop loss orders, all those sell orders, they'll they'll get triggered and they'll actually probably trigger the market into these buy orders and so that means you know Mr. Fi you know order book guy that's sitting there running a market and he's shorting and he's driving it down this is his target area as soon as he gets these orders these orders come in that'll fill him right cuz he's short right now he needs to buy back right so these guys are going to sell to him that he's buying back does that make sense yeah yeah so if you're a bull, this is a really important level. Yeah, well, I hope it works out. I'm scared it'll bounce off of the 400, but hopefully it won't. Hopefully mathematics is, will work out like it always does. So I don't know why I'm worried. Yeah, um, other than it being a psychological level, but, and you know, you see the candles here around 500, right? Yeah. You know, this is daily. Right, so the first time it went and tagged it, yeah, it did jump back. But you know, if you're sure, oh, you're not sure. You're just sitting in cash. You know, again, four sixty four seventy. There's probably buy orders. You know, and you saw how it snip snapped back here, right? There's probably people. Yeah. I'd be willing to bet there was people here. You know, that were playing the five hundred that were just hoping that this sixty one point eight would be tagged. Look how it bounced back after the tag here. Right, this is yeah. pretty dramatic rally off of this tag. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is that OTE zone. If the market's going to bottom, it's going to bottom somewhere in here. Now, this massive price channel here suggests that if this zone doesn't hold, then we're probably heading down into this area, which really sucks. And that would mean that this whole this whole story is just unwinding, because yeah. they always say that. Um, a, the bull. A, if this thing is really a bull, or any market's really a bull, it's got to hold that 78.6. So you know, I was uh, talking about a four-hour setup the other day, and if we just look at this action here, blown up, right? I was telling people, look at if this really is a bull, like if this if this bottom is for real. This 78 level's got a hold, right? I don't know if that's the actual bottom. Let's see. Did I draw that correctly? I just guessed. Oh, no, it's a little bit lower. Right there. Right? So if this was a bull, this 78 level had to hold. And look how they punched down and then ratcheted back. Punched down and then ratcheted back and then slowly and look how we actually built this floor can you see this floor that built up here yeah right along this level you know, there was literally like look at all those lows in there you know so they set this up uh, and so you know that meant the fail of this 78.6 that uh, the, the bull was, was basically dead There's, whatever this move was it's over um, and sure enough, we've just cascaded lower here, right? 
and on heavier volume, which isn't good. Um, so if we go back out to that daily, you know, so this is this sort of little bull run. That level had to hold for this bottom to be real. Well, same thing here. If if we if this OTE zone, it failed. And sure enough, we're cascading lower. Now we're into this bigger one. And this range is huge, no doubt about it. And, you know, I mean, if I was a, you know, in fact, I had a guy the other day said, you know, I got 120,000 bucks, blah, 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 blah. I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. Yeah. My general hunch is, you know, the problem with BTCE in particular is, you know, it's tough to get fills on size. You yeah. know, one or two coins, yeah, that's no problem. But if you get kind of a little bit of a dull market and you put an order in for 20 coins, you're going to launch the market, you know, especially if it's like a market order. You're toast. Your, your fills are going to be horrific. Mm -hmm. So my advice is, is you just nibble away. Nibble, 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 nibble. Now, you remember that, um, that uh, produce chart that I did? Uh, where is it? This here. You know, this torture could go on for a while. I think you're probably going to trade your way through this. You'll be in and out and in and out. But this, and you know, we're heading into seasonally a dangerous time of year, right? Have you ever heard the cliche, sell in May and walk away? No, I did. I heard the phrase the other day, ironically. It might have been you that said it, actually. Yeah, so that's, uh, it's an old market uh, axiom. And basically it's derived because uh, a lot of the commodity business um, they top out right in the early spring because all the manufacturers and wholesalers uh, buy up all the products they're expecting to use in the housing market mm -hmm. uh, for the summer building season. Um, so, you know, long and short of it is is that um, um, it's uh, it's typically a tough time of year. You know, it usually goes on into uh, middle to the end of June. You know, and we humans we act weird around the. Um, the uh, solstices, anyway. So. Yeah, uh, I had that chat with Fibber. He had all the little moons on his. Uh, yeah, on his well, chart. it's you know, like if we just do the moon cycle, and I love that little indicator. Um, it's quite remarkable to watch. And then we just do this. So, I mean, look at that, eh? I mean, yeah. <laughs> new moon, top, 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 bottom, bottom, you know, trough. I guess this is it. We're troughing in here. I don't know. That's tough to say. Trough, trough, trough. Well, that one's not so much. But uh, you know, especially and what I've noticed as a broker, and even as a trader myself, um, that uh, the new moon is often a very good time. Uh, full moon, yeah. You know, I mean, it can be. You know, cataclysmic, I suppose. But the new moons, I've noticed the new moons, market's generally happy. I notice in my life things are going relatively well. I'm feeling optimistic. So, you know, um, my hunch is, is we probably get a little bit of a rally into the next new moon, whatever that is. But that's probably a few weeks away now. Eh? You know, I wouldn't be super, like, you're sort of feeling like a, a bottom's trying to come in here somewhere? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so... If we do the moon cycle here, because I'm ultimate, ultimately bullish, I'm I'm convinced of the fundamentals of Bitcoin and all all of that stuff. The hysteria got to me as well, but you know I'm real I'm realistic when I look at the chart. I'm not just going to hold on to it while it plummets by hundreds of dollars. So we just had a new moon. That means the next one is a, a full moon. So that would be a cycle low. Uh, oh, great. Moon would be a month or so from now. So when is this? This is uh, March 30th. So that would be April. A oh, long, long, long way away on this chart. Well, it's interesting how that looks so much different than this. What does a four hour here look like? So okay. if somebody asked you, what is the fundamental value of a Bitcoin? What's your answer, Darren? I wouldn't be able to tell you, but I, but I think I think it'll be worth quite a lot in the long run because 
just of what it is and just because of how innovative it is but also because uh, I, I saw there's a bit there's a series on YouTube and the guy's called uh, Bitcoin world news or something I've got him bit I've got him um, bookmarked what's his name world Bitcoin network is the name of the channel and he talks about the top five markets and one of them is credit cards one of them is remittance and one of them is something else and he goes through and he tells you the value of each of these markets and he says that even if Bitcoin only got like a few percent of each of these markets some of them are in the trillions and then if that if, if the whole Bitcoin network had that much market capital because you know exactly how many Bitcoins exist at any one time that would make individ each individual coin this particular value and it's always always in the millions so I mean Bitcoin's got its competitors now though there's hundreds of these things now the, it still has first mover advantage, I think, and the industry seems to be being built around around that uh, one one coin. So well, I don't know. I, I noticed that myself. Um, there was this site that I think it's this one. No, not that one. Uh, somebody showed it to me the other day. Oh, here it is. This is it. And they said even just before Christmas there were just a few of these, and now. There's just tons of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when there were four. I remember when we used to look at that, there were four of them. Right, so uh, the point, I suppose, and, you know, who knows if this is, oh, next 100. If you, I mean, how long is the damn list? 208, is that what this number's at? So the point here is that, and I think you just hit sort of hit the nail on the head, is... Mm -hmm. um, and this has sort of been my postulation, is that um, markets typically peak, and you get into sort of bubbles, when they represent any more than about 30 to 35 percent of an economy. Um, so if, if you try and figure out what the global economy is, I think it's probably 20 trillion, somewhere in that neighborhood. Wow. Um, you know, annual GDP, um, maybe a bit more than that, but probably not a heck of a lot more than that. Um, so, if that's the case, right? What is what is thirty percent of twenty trillion? Holy crap! That's, uh, based a little less than a um, little less than seven trillion dollars. So that's how big the market could be if it gets to bubble sort of sort of status. Yeah. Um, and then within the U.S. economy, you know, U.S. economy is about 12 trillion. So, you know, if the cryptocurrency market, you know, or the market caps got up into the neighborhood of, uh, you know, I suppose 30% uh, of 12 trillion, whatever the hell that number is, uh, about 4 trillion or so, somewhere in there. Uh, so there's lots and lots and lots and lots of room to grow. You know, and Absolutely. people. Didn't uh, people didn't realize it through the dot com boom, but basically uh, at the top, the uh, like there was one company in Canada, one telecom company, that represented thirty five percent of the Canadian market cap. The entire Canadian stock market was in one company. You know, so these things do happen. They actually do happen. It's freaky. So. Um, and you know, ultimately, I suppose is. How many of the, you know, like I heard the country of Iceland now is issuing every Icelandic citizen of uh, their their coin. Is it this Aurora coin? Yeah, it is. That's, that's theirs, right? Uh, so it's not going to be Bitcoin, you know, conquers the world. It's probably going to be like, you know, every country has its own little coin kind of idea. And then, you know, like countries like uh, the States and, you know, Great Britain and, you know, whatever, any of the G8s, there's probably like multiple coins, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, and I've made the argument, I think that this sort of catalyst here, where it actually can turn, I make the argument that that'll probably happen when we get a U.S. listed exchange or maybe even just a North American listed exchange for these bitcoins, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's the growing pains that this thing's going through right now. Uh, is not so much the actual coins themselves; it's the trustworthiness of the exchanges. Totally, and public understanding as well. I try and explain Bitcoin to so many people, but they get the impression that it's very slightly technical, and they just don't want to hear. They don't want to hear it. Yep. 
So. In fact, uh, you know, like I'm pretty, like I'm a technical analyst, and I look at a lot of numbers and charts, and you know, I, I wrote all the uh, the PHP and MySQL and uh, JavaScript for this website. And my cousin was trying to explain to me how the blockchain works, and I got fuzzy eyed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not easy to comprehend, and I suppose no. you could argue um, that you're gonna need somebody like a you know like uh, you know like something like Twitter and Facebook. Yep. They're actually extremely easy concepts. I yeah, mean, the all form. they are is a is a web page, right? Which is an HTML document with a form and the form just submits that data to a database. I mean that's all Facebook or Twitter is. Yep. Um, and yet if you had like 10, 15 years ago, you know, talked to people about social media and all that kind of nonsense, right? It would have just, you know, been completely beyond them. Um, however, if you say, you know, do you tweet or do you do Facebook now, the public's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's easy. Right, so yeah. I think it's it's got to get to that point. And um, a conversation I was having with this gentleman the other day about the chart that we're looking at right now, um, he uh, was saying, "Yeah, you're right, Brian. In fact, what'll happen is is you're going to have a whole industry of companies that all they do is just make Bitcoinies e easy for the public. You know, mm -hmm. make it nice and glossy." And it seems to me like you want a growth business, that to me sounds like a really good idea, is creating a nice fuzzy, sort of warm and fuzzy environment to understand and, and do these Bitcoins. Because even right now, you know, like it took a bit of work for me to set up a wallet and then get an account with BTCE and then move money over and all that kind of stuff, right? I mean, it wasn't just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, and, and the public needs boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> But yeah, I, think I, what you're, I think you're right. I also heard somebody else say this, that I heard somebody say that within a few years, you're going to have trillions of dollars. Well, may, maybe he was just talking in billions. You're yeah. going to have billions of dollars in transactions that are going to be done through Bitcoins, and you don't even realize that you're doing it because it's yeah. just going to be so much easier for companies to use. Sure. It's going to be like that, uh, something in B, what were they called? Something B. Oh, that shop, that, that, it's like a, it's a physical location that's just like, oh, Neo and B, Neo B. I think they're a, they are an actual shop outlet that you walk into, and then they will do remittance for you and other banking services. I don't know what they are, because I haven't really looked into it. But yeah. they are, um... That that's what they're doing. They're they're doing it so Joe Public can just walk in, hand over some money over the counter, and then everything else is taken care of for them. Yeah, yeah. So you know that's a that's an interesting direction uh, we could go. So now, you know this brings me back to just you know the simple question. You know it's one thing to sort of see that these bitcoins are going to become part of the fabric of our society. It's quite another thing to understand what the actual value of one of these things is at any given point in time. Yeah. You know. So just as it is right now, I don't necessarily think that that someone has said that bitcoins are worth thirty dollars and that's where we're going. I think what's happening right now is the Chinese, of course, are notorious gamble gamblers, right? I mean they love to gamble. Um, and I think this whole Bitcoin thing uh, to the Chinese was just a nice big casino. Um, and now the government there has come out and basically said, you're not allowed to play in this casino. And so we're just getting, you know, supply is just overwhelming demand. Mm -hmm. when, uh, whenever supply overwhelms demand, guess which way price goes? <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, the interesting thing, right, that's supposed to be an April 14th deadline. So it would be very interesting to see what, you know, do we put in a bottom ahead of that event? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, or is that, you know, if anything, if you're a bull, you want to see that be the bottom. So you want to see price drive into that low. 
and yeah. that would tell you that it's over. If we bought them ahead of that event and rally into that event, then that means that there's more bear to come. Sure, and I can see that happening as well because last time China did this and they put all the scaremongering about Bitcoin is banned and everything, that deadline came and went and there was no crash. The crash happened on the very initial announcement that this might happen. That's when the reaction was. And yeah. then it was just a slow little, it was just slowly down until the deadline happened and then we back, began to rise. We began going up again. Yeah. So. But, and then, so that means that that it, that was a sell on the rumor and then buy on the news scenario, eh? Yeah. Anyway, should be an interesting uh, go at it here. And, you know, that's half of this problem is that these things right now, in my opinion, they're not trading on some sort of fundamental value. They're just trading purely on inertia right now. Just It's inertia, and that's it. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's uh, – what time is it now? It's 4 o'clock. Let's uh, pop over to – oh, we also have Mo. Hello, Mo. What does Mo say? Take a look at how your video is displaying on YouTube. For some reason, Brian's video is not displaying. Oh, that sucks. So I'm looking into that for you, Brian, too, by the way. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Um, Haven had a comment about the... Um, uh, Do I have to click? Presumably the fat finger uh, wick. He said it did clean them out, but I think most of those trades were reversed. Wow, were they? At least. And then you've been on air for about an hour. I just wanted to remind you, and then I'll be back on you. Well, thanks, sweetie. Mm -hmm. How do you reverse a trade? Uh, the, the, well, the exchange themselves, they would just bust the trade. Yeah, but wouldn't you be livid if you just managed to buy, buy, a, buy something? <laughs> And you then, obviously haven't traded for very long, have you? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I didn't think that could happen. <laughs> oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> oh my God, I would be so upset. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, it's funny to watch the guys on the floor, right? They just they just crap their pants when the when a when a um, um, a market uh, specialist comes along and says, ah, we're busting the trade. And it's funny to watch them go ballistic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, that, it happens a lot. Yeah. How do you justify that, though? You know, that's the that's people bidded and people bought, and now you're just going to undo uh, that. Yeah, have you ever heard of the term, um, you know, in the futures business, they have a term, it's called um, force majeure. You ever heard that term before? Force no. majeure. Basically, it's French, and it means that it was an act of God that uh, intervened, and and that's actually a legal term, force majeure. And, wow! Uh, you can actually get out of like, uh, you know what? You know, I mean, this is the sad part about our world we live in, right? I mean, do you read half of the fine print that that you sign off to on any of these online things or any of the agreements? I don't have enough life. I don't have enough life in me to actually do it. I won't yeah. do it for 70 so years. Somewhere buried in the fine print, they'll have a clause that says, in the case of a force majeure, we have the authority to reverse transactions. Holy hell. Yeah, wow. Happens all the time. Shocking. So, uh, and that's interesting. So, um, that was Mo. You said that they uh, they busted the two. The, oh, um who was it that said that they busted those trades? Uh, it was Haven. Haven, you said that? Yeah. And Haven, your, your mic is hot. Do you want to come on and talk to Coach? Yeah, you got a question? You've been sitting patiently yeah. on the sidelines. Sure, yeah, thank you. Um, about those trades that I think were reversed, I read something to that effect on the bitcointalk.org forum. Um, I know I was trading at the time on Bitfinex, and the exchange froze up just as the largest drop happened, and it only came back after my margin position was, you know, into the double digits in profit instead of four. So I was a bit frustrated with that. You were with the trade, or the trade was going against you? I was with it, fortunately. Um, but, you know, when it bottomed, the market, the exchange that I was trading on had frozen, so I wasn't able to close. Oh well. So uh, at least we've got some uh, savvy traders who are taking advantage. Are you short right at the moment, Haven? 
I've been in and out, and I have not taken advantage of the recent price movement like I could have. I haven't been paying attention much over the past week, so I was in from 600 and um, have not done as well as I should have. Well, I only noticed once it dropped to 5.30 or so uh, that, you know, it happened. Yeah. A bit disappointing. Well, and that's the thing, right, is... Uh... And I don't know whether you saw this uh, weekly chart that I had up here. That uh, where the heck is it? Here. I mean, this, this, these processes are painful and they're a pain in the butt. But basically, we got to go through it to set up the next leg higher. Do you really think? I mean, those green squiggles you drew show an eventual bottom somewhere above 200. You know, in a couple months' time, a few months, and. I'm skeptical that it would take that long. If you look at the last run-up in the spring of 13, That's you know, right. you had April 266, what, April 12th, and then the bottom was July 6th. So that was, you know, three months between high and low. And it seems like this, this you know, pop is taking a lot longer and it's a lot more protracted. Um, but I would be really surprised to see below, you know, 370, 380. I would be surprised to see below 400. It seems support is really strong there. Uh, yeah, in fact, well, we were looking at that chart up close, eh? And uh, Darren likes that 375 area. And I like it, too. Um, where the heck is it? Uh, I really like this area here, this 375. Um, having said that, you know, I think our, our Mr. Fat Finger here, he defined the trading range. So, you know, we have our um, the weekly chart here. This is our Mr. Fat Finger here. And so you can see the triangle right here, right? Does it come all the way down here and tag the low? It doesn't have to. It might only just do, you know, and basically our thesis here is that it's... Uh, it's going to come down, you know, here's that fat finger low there. Um, and I find it fascinating that the fat finger low just happened to be right on the trend line. I mean, that doesn't, that's, that's not a coincidence. Something significant happened there. Um, so I would argue that our trading range is actually established by this one candle right here. And is it possible? Sorry. That's okay. What's the question? Is it possible that that candle, I mean, that wick is so deep because of some forced liquidations of, you know, of margin positions? I think it was something that like that. It could be. It definitely could be. It definitely could be. I mean, I got the impression that it was just, it was one, one person, in, one individual person uh, involved, but I don't know. You know, the question I would have, and this, you know, like this is a fairly large volume bar here. So the question I would have is, you know, did this trade here that triggered this volume, did it go and clean out all of these open orders that were sitting there? Did it clean out this guy's stops here? Did it clean out these open orders here? I don't know what the answer to that is. I'm assuming no, because, but that's a, probably a dangerous assumption. So, you know, here's that fat finger candle. And really all this is saying is, here's your trading range. And damn, it's a big one. You know? And, you know, what a coincidence that this trend channel just happens to be right down at the bottom here. Now, I mean, like we said earlier, you know, if this really is a bull, we need to see this 300 level hold. Right? You really need to see that hold. You know, and here's a great example. You know, here's a nice, simple, recent example of it not holding. Is your is your thought that we might see 375, 380 only because it's the 705 fib or I like this low. Or what is it? You guys see this low here? This is really my uh, yeah yeah. This low right here. So this spike down here. So and what a coincidence that just so happens to be right on that 70.5 fib. But this low candle here is what's really important to me. But you know, and you know, the 
and especially that low there. What's that? 380, 375. 382.49. You know, so there's obviously some sort of buying demand down in this area. But at the same time, you know, you have to ask yourself, and you know, the sad part about it, right, is bulls will look at this guy. Oh, where'd he go? Bulls will look at this and go, oh no, this is meaningless, doesn't mean anything. Oh no, it's just a fat finger, blah, 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 blah. It's not really that big of a deal. But if this thing just works its way down and then takes out that low, in hindsight, we're going to go, well, that son of a bitch, he cleaned out all of those buy orders that should have supported the market. <laughs> you know, hindsight's always 2020. I mean, really, the bottom line here, right, is they're going after this 431 low right now. Right? I think that's pretty obvious. Um, we might turn in here, but I certainly don't see anything from volume. If I go and look at my... Um, my model, you know, Willie's starting to get kind of stupid here, so this is not the time to be feeding into the selling panic. There'll be better days to sell ahead. Um, if you are short, then, you know, you might as well just keep riding the shorts. I see a little bit of help. From the MACD, uh, and this is just very good as just a raw momentum reading. So we've got a higher low and high, uh, higher low and higher high being established here in the raw momentum, even though we're actually making lower lows. So this in itself is what's called a bullish momentum divergence. So something's brewing there, and then if you pan this out a little bit you can see that we have this bullish momentum divergence here as well where momentum was flat the price was falling right so we do have momentum divergences at work here so again this sort of reiterates what Willie's saying this is not a good time to be shorting this is just asking for trouble if, to go short here you know, that would just be the same sort of logic as, you know, when you get divergences up top, it's really not a good idea to be buying. Um, I guess what that was off of. Let's see if we can give you an example of that. Let me just step in here. Hey, Darren, can you take yourself off of screen share? And anyone else that has their screen share on, can you take yourself off except for Coach? Just give that a try. Thanks, Co thanks, guys. Yeah, done it. I think. I think so. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking for a bearish momentum divergence, but I don't see one on this chart just off the top of my head. And really, as bulls, we don't want to see bear momentum divergences. Hmm. Well, I can't show you that for today's tutorial, but I suppose I could. Uh, I could pull up a chart that shows it. Let's see. Do we have one here? Uh, fibs. Options expiry. Let's see what show. All right. Where can we find a bearish momentum divergence? So you could argue that this action here is not really a very good example. But the fact that we had a high there and then a lower high there meant that you needed to wait for this to clean up. Then when we actually got the bullish momentum divergence, that was an awesome time to enter. Probably not the best example, though. Like I said, let's find a better one. Oh, here's a good one. So using my, I like the crisp indicator. Here we made lower highs and lower lows, and yet price was making higher highs and higher lows. So this rally here, you can see there's just not on any momentum. So this is a very dangerous time to buy. And sure enough, boom, down she goes. So uh, something to consider. Um, all right. Did I don't know whether you had actually had a question uh, there, Haven? Did you have, did you have a question? I think you covered it actually. Thank you. 
Okay, good. Uh, Mo, anything on your mind? How's that video on YouTube looking, uh, uh, Beauty? Is it is it working? I think uh, Darren, after uh, in the housekeeping after the tutorial session, I'm going to ask him some questions about his about his screen share setup. But yeah, I, I think maybe you, you will have some issues with screen share on this one. Um, I guess just the question is: Is the YouTube thing going? Like yeah, your YouTube is fine. It's 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 going fine with it with just the regular lag. It's just I think when Darren went to screen share because he's, he also acts as a producer that it oh, may have okay. taken over your screen share. So. Um, so when I'm on my page, how do I see the live? Thing? Um, do you here? Let me let me give you your your YouTube link. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what my YouTube I know. Link is. <laughs> here you go. That's your YouTube link right there. Um, okay, back off to Mo. Try getting Dan to log off and log back in. Yeah, um, you're, you're talking about trying to get Brian. Um, well, Brian is the lead, the lead of the of the YouTube. But thanks, Mo. Um, Mo, do you have a hot mic um, by any chance? No, oh, there it is. Okay. And you'll notice also, um, Brian, that there's a, quite a bit of a lag by the time you get onto it. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So what is it? It's about four twenty after four. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I would consider this a success if you guys feel like you had questions answered. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can just go on mute if you guys want to ask me anything. The point here is uh, this was just supposed to be a tutorial. Um, if you had questions, feel free. I might uh, just do one more quick trading view uh, post just to catch any stragglers. Okay, and then let, let me follow up. And I'm only coming in here as a guest to you guys. But what you want to do is that you want to subscribe to Brian on his YouTube channel. Okay, definitely do that. Follow him on Trading View. And also, if you would, um, please make a comment on one of his trading view charts uh, that um, says whether or not you got anything out of it or your questions were answered something along that nature so that he can follow up um, with the outreach and that helps quite a bit um, but do all of you follow him on the G plus stream as well and also Twitter so let's make sure that everybody's got you know all the Bases. There you go, Darren. He's on it. And Mo says yes. Thank you, Mo. And Haven, how about you? There you go. So you're hitting on all cylinders, Coach. Oh, fantastic. That is. And he, and you have a new follower on Trading View. Um, let me think. What else? What would be kind of good for you guys is that as you've listened to these uh, sessions or even if you go back and archive and you have any questions, can you like keep them in your phone or something and send those questions to Coach and then he can at any point in time if things are kind of dull or people are you know nervous to get on mic, he can have these questions um, at the ready and, um, and deal with those Q&As especially if he does things every day. So if you have questions or you, you thought of something or you heard something that maybe you didn't understand, these first few people that come into his circle and to this outreach will be those people that um, uh, really are the most help. And as it grows, of course, that circle will become smaller and smaller. So. Um, right, guys, so I'm just uh, going to put a chart to, whoops, let's get rid of that. Uh -huh. I'm just going to put a chart together on the kind of stuff we talked about today. Okay. Uh, how the four-hour OTE failed. Uh, now we're working off this daily OTE. Uh, we're kind of interested in this 385 level. Was that, was that the level? Oh, that's right, Coach. You like for people to make comments on the contemporary chart on the most recent ones. Yeah. yeah, so I'll pop yeah, that makes this, sense. and then if you if you guys found any value, uh, Haven, I don't know whether you've published or not, or uh, commented on my charts or not before, 
or Mo. Uh, I just uh, I like people just to give me a little bit of feedback, and then if anybody asks me, well, did anybody actually attend the tutorial? I can show them, oh yeah, this person attended, and they seem to like what they liked. So it's up to you guys, but basically I'm going to produce something along this lines that we talked about today. And then has everyone gone to Coach's website? Let's ask the three. Well, I, you know, I don't, want to, I don't want to tout the site. Um, you're more than welcome to go to it. Coach, just hold on a minute. Okay, sorry. People want to go to your site, dude. Oh, okay. There, there's too much value there. Come on now, just let it happen. There's the website right there, guys. The rationalinvestor.ca. So uh, keep in mind that on Mondays we were said uh, uh, another Trading View participant, uh, the Chasm, and I were going to do a weekly options show. So we're going to start that in about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. Um, and I'm going to be specifically talking about the options uh, trades that I've uh, posted here on StockTwits and uh, and on um, uh, on TradingView recently. So uh, and then promote my show with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and tomorrow, uh, Beauty and I will be looking at uh, popular stocks in the news and whether they. Justify their fundamental valuations. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what to say. I, know. I, thought, I noticed uh, my little. I thought it was really interesting that I don't know whether it was you, but somebody was asking me to look at the retailers. Yeah, and yeah. CVS. I remember CVS came up. I know. And uh, CVS actually came up on my little engine as a. I know. I know, and actually, just like with everything in my life, I'm always early. To see there it is. Look at that. Like I'm a week early on. Um, actually, P Sun did beautifully today too. So I'm really going to have some fun with them. Just four names that I bring up, and the yeah. name of the show is Chart Sugar, and it's fashion related. So if you guys have like you know girlfriends or wives who'd have no interest in the market whatsoever, have them come on and listen. Because uh, it's a fascinating way to learn about the markets, but through kind of the back door, a little bit by bringing up the more pop, you know, popular names. Well, and actually, and, and you guys, uh, you'll notice that the uh, production quality of the show will be much better. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna take you. I, I, I think you're gonna be up and running within a dozen shows, and I, I, I think everybody's gonna hang with you. Everybody's going to hang out. All right, so I'll be back on mute. And I think yeah. you did a great job um, today, Coach. Much, much, much better. And like your attendance today, too. All right. Thanks, sweetie. Um, so I think I'm just going to sort of wrap it up here, guys. Uh, like I said, well, I'll be back on in about a half an hour or so. You're more than welcome to uh, pop in for that. Um, not as much uh, Bitcoin talk, um, but uh, but uh, more on the options. Uh, but I think, uh, well, I don't, it's entirely up to you. You might find value in it, you might not. Um, but so did I, uh, number one, did I answer the questions that were posed today. Is anybody, um, I think I'm going to have to do a new uh, URL because it will have its own name and uh, on the YouTube thing. Um, so um, I'll post it in the TradingView community. It will also be posted on my Twitter feed. So if you follow me, uh, it's at CRinvestor on Twitter. Uh, you should get the little uh, notice there. Um, good, Mo. I'm glad you like um, and good, okay, so you should get a little notice about that. All right, so um, Darren, any closing questions, comments, concerns? No, nah, all good. I enjoyed the show as always. I'm looking forward to seeing the next show in half an hour. Okay. I'm gonna become, my goal, Brian, is to become the best amateur trader that there's ever been. <laughs> Well, you're already there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're too late, Fibber. I'm closing down. <laughs> so, um, 
Uh, Fibro, I don't know whether you can hear me or not. We're going to start the uh, Chasm and uh, CR Investor Options show in about a half an hour. So, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. So uh, try and pop in for that one if you want to listen to my options spiel. All right, Chief? Yeah, I'm down with that. Okay. Talk to you soon. Miss talking to you. Coach, bye. Bye. Have a bye, good afternoon, buddy. everyone.